Welcome to IoTCon 2014. I'm here with Julien Vermillat. Hi. How is my pronunciation? Oh, good. <laughs> good, good. Um, Julien is a software engineer at Sierra Wireless. And in a session yesterday, he gave an overview over the protocol landscape in the IoT. Um, Julien, what would you say are the two, three or four most important protocols right now? Uh, today, I think the m most important protocol for IoT are, say, MQTT and Co-op for application. And you still have a lot of device management done with OMADM, even if it's not a, an IoT space protocol, but it's still really used a lot in the, in the IoT space. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see new protocols, but for today, what I see uh, day to day, there is a lot of people using MQTT and Co-op for building new applications. I think it's really the most important protocol today. Do you have a favorite protocol? Um, in fact, no, you know, my job is to implement <laughs> protocol. So if there is one protocol, <laughs> I have no job. So, um, yes, I'm really a big fan of MQTT because it's really easy to get started and really simple. Uh, yes, and I think it's maybe if I need to pick one is really MQTT because it's so simple. It's really easy to build an application from scratch in one hour or two hours. It's mm -hmm. really awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, MQTT is on the way of um, being standardized. Um, people keep saying that we need more standards for the IoT. Do you think um, two or three or four protocols will become a standard um, in the next few years? And what are those? Um, there is several standards. There is different standards for different things. Like, where well, protocol can be different stuff, like security layers, like uh, publish subscribe layer or serialization layers. So um, if there is there is a lot of standard actually. <coughs> I think there are maybe 10 or 20 standards uh, from IETF, from OME, from um, from also OASIS, from uh, different space like Etsy or uh, also 1M2M stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think today there is a lot of standards. No, People need to use it, and maybe in the future we'll see if only one or two or three protocols uh, keeps going. But today is really early to, to, to say if there is going to have one protocol or two uh, winning the space <coughs> in the competitions. So for now, we need this diversity of, of protocols. But yeah, be do, do we need re really need um, more than 200? But I, I think today we are trying to, to, to build the business cases, to, to invent new usage, so we need to have a lot of innovations. And I think okay. it's really too early to, to, stay, to say we need to do the things this way. <coughs> maybe in 10 years, maybe in 20 years, yes. but today I think we just need to, to explore stuff, to do open source libraries, and at some point something will emerge, oh, this is a really good solution for building what we do today. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little more about CoAP, the Constraint Application Protocol, <coughs> REST Protocol? As a um, CoAP protocol is a um, really interesting protocol because it's it's really a new one, totally new, uh, and it was built for, I think, for the future, for IPv6, for deploying when, you know, when you have keynote of people saying we are going to, to deploy uh, 50 billion object you know, and put them on the internet. Uh, actually, there, um, you, we are not going to do that with the actual technology with it IPv4 and maybe MQTT. It's, it's not that um, scalability. It's not that massive. Uh, Coop is really here for trying to solve the problem. Uh, but it depends a lot of IPv6 or new technology, which are still not here today. Um, and the ID behind co-op is ready to decouple the, the object and the application to have an API on the object and you write applications talking to different objects, discovering different objects and create a new application. Uh, it's a really interesting protocol and there is a lot of deployments of co-op today. Mm -hmm. A lot of people doing smart city stuff. Uh, you don't see a lot of you don't have a lot of information in the news about that, but 
I think it's the Los Angeles city is using Coop and Sixtopan for oh, really? for handling the, the lightning system. Oh, okay. uh, creating a mesh network from mm -hmm. the the street light. Uh, I think Cisco is doing a lot of stuff with Coop and maybe they are deploying millions of sensors. Mm -hmm. so it's really new. It's really a new technology. It's really interesting. So it's pretty much a rising star in the protocol landscape. A hot candidate for a standard, maybe. Um, what about lightweight M2M? Um, I think you're imp implementing that, that right now. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, where <coughs> I implemented uh, several protocols, but today I'm really working on lightweight M2M. Uh, lightweight M2M is a device management protocol. Device management is for managing your device, uh, upgrading the firmware, uh, pushing your security keys, the configuration for, and monitoring your device for. Uh, running a, a fleet of devices uh, is something totally separate of the applications. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lightweight M2M is a new protocol. Uh, it's replacing OMADM, but for the IoT M2M space. And uh, it's built on top of Coop, and it's really, uh, in fact, a nice REST API on your device for configuring it, upgrading it. Nice. It's really an interesting protocol because today the solution we have for device management and the machine-to-machine -machine space is really our solution from the phone manufacturer and are not really a good fit for, for us. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about the, the origins of Lightweight m 2 um, The origin, I think, is... I don't know exactly. I think it's people from Sensinode, which are now mm. a division of ARM. Um, and it's the Open Mobile Alliance who really wanted to, to, to create new standard for the machine-to-machine -machine space and move out of of the phone space and now we need to build standard ready for machine to machine and IoT. Mm. Uh, yes, I think the, really the, the idea is, is that. And finally, MQTT, um, which already has a big community behind it, around it. Um, there's been some controversy <coughs> lately about um, implementing M MQTT. Some people claim that um, it was d too difficult to implement on the server side. What would you say to them? What would you reply? Yeah, the, <laughs> the idea of MQTT is ready to, to make the, the thing really simple for for the client, for the object. And well, you know, you are going to develop one server and to maybe to create one million device. So you can build an MQTT client in one day. It's really simple. Mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, and the idea is that NS, of course, on the server side is a bit more complicated. Uh, you have different quality of services. Um, the quality of service too is, yes, it's hard to scale, but you are not, it's not mandatory to use it. You need mm. to understand how it's working and just, okay, if I have a lot of messaging, uh, messaging I will use QS0, QS1, it's scalable. QS2 is just for specific use cases. You, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 you know, when you develop standard or protocol is never perfect. There is always trade off and there is always people saying, okay, is, yes, this part of the protocol is, is not good. Yes, but you have all the rest of the protocol to use. That's, mm. I yeah, I think it's controversy, it's a, this controversy is it's nice, it's a good feedback, but it's not preventing people from using MQTT. Mm, okay. But you think there's no one protocol to rule them all, as you suggested in your talk title yesterday? Uh, even, <laughs> even for web today, we use HTTP, yeah. but WebSocket is already a different protocol. Yeah. We still use different protocol for mails, for DNS, for whatever we have. Of course. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Enjoy your last day at IoTCon. Thank you. See you next time. Have a good day. Bye.